Ooh, fancy graphics. This must mean it's a JDI racing video. And, well, it sort of is. Yeah, just, just wait a bit. We're first going to come here in GT7. And the reason why is because a little bit of an oddity happened, and I kind of want to complain a little bit. So I started getting back into racing in GT Sport. Started in 2018. The online racing was great. Game looked great. I did the dailies. I did the manufacturers. I did the uh, uh, the national series and stuff like that. Did okay. I was pretty decent. And then I started racing with the guys I race in now. Um, met the boys who eventually uh, established GLR. Raced against them a bunch and been doing that for the last you know, probably two and a half years or so. Absolutely adore them. And the reason why I had so much fun with it is the game actually was good. The online racing that, that Polyphony established allowed for a good close racing. You could get, you know, within inches of the cars around you and it wasn't an issue. You could actually train yourself to really race each other very hard and that made things fun. I mean, the fact that I could ride the bumper of, you know, of Kazi or, or, uh, or Racer, even when I'm maybe a little bit inebriated, is a testament to how good that game was. And when GT7 was announced, we were all very excited, but there were a few red flags. I mean, the announcement trailer that they showed had a bunch of cars that were basically pulled from... GT Sport. I mean, the Mercedes that I'm showing right now is the same 2016 Mercedes that they had in GT Sport. And the thing is that GT7 has been sort of lackluster since its launch in March. The game is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It is gorgeous. But the racing has been subpar because you have a lot of lag, a lot of jitteriness, and to say that the internet connections are a bit unstable in a race is kind of an understatement. Because sometimes it just goes to shit. And that's what we're going to look at in a little bit here. So, the car that I'm racing here, and you'll, you're obviously looking at it and thinking, hmm, JD... That looks a bit like a Corvette. Well, that's sort of the point. If you look at the decals, it says this uh, <laughs> this car identifies as an AMG Corvette. That's sort of a, an inside joke. Basically, the this is my car for uh, the EDTM league that I'm in. It's based off the DTM uh, German, basically the German touring cars, and I've been annoying the host of that with uh, wanting to race a Corvette for the last two seasons, I guess. He keeps saying no, I took it personally, hence this car. So we're going to dive into a race here. And if you're wondering, yes, I am in 13th of 13th place. I got sort of taken out. We're here at Watkins Glen in GT7 in a race. We've got 12 other guys from all around the world. And I'm doing terribly. It's mainly because I got taken out in lap one. Things got dicey in the boot. I'm just putting in the laps and just trying to have a decent race. And the uh, polyphony servers thought differently. Because this happened. And I'm just about as confused as you are because I'm looking at the map and I'm seeing cars still going around. What actually ended up happening is, you know, we had a, another guy who's based in the UK. Uh, he was doing commentary for it. So we really are sort of all over the globe on this one. Because uh, we got some Finns, we got some South Africans, we got some Germans, we got some Brits, we got some Americans, we got Australians. And apparently Polyphony just can't handle it anymore because apparently the thing you do in future games is you regress. And all I'm doing here is just spinning around. You spin me right around, baby, right around, like a record, baby, right around, round, round. Ugh. 
just sort of annoyed me because I could have had a good race. Well, actually, this actually kind of benefited me because, well, I didn't have a good race. But all the jitteriness and stuff like that has really sort of been a pain. But as you see, I realize, yeah, lobby's screwed. So we're going to back out of this. So good job, PD. You continue to disappoint. Now I think it's time that we take a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Do you suck at racing? Are you down by five laps in a four lap race? Want to get good? Come to Cassian Racers School for kids who can't drive good and want to do other stuff good too. Get good, son. Official racing school of GLR Esports. Yeah, I'm gonna milk that one for everything it's worth. Gotta love the space chickens. And of course, Cassian Racers, school for kids can't race good. It's too much fun. Yeah, I mean, I spent quite a while on that animation. I think it was like maybe a week or so, just solid rendering. So we're here at the Charlotte Roval. And the Charlotte Roval is an interesting track. If you've ever played GT7, it's similar to how Blue Moon's infield is, where it incorporates the oval portion of Charlotte Motor Speedway, which is a mile and a half speedway, with a, a race course that they've built in the infield. And it's a very strange kind of layout. Now, I miraculously qualified pole. You can see my arms, chicken farm, Mazda, Miata, Lovely little touring car. I actually adore these cars. These things are fun to drive. And second place, oddly, didn't get in. I don't know why. Let's see a little bit of a false start from the white out of there. I get a pretty good jump here. Now, what was interesting was my qualifying time was actually one one thousandth off of my second lap. It was uh, just, it was incredible. But I get pulled. And I immediately start pulling away from the rest of the pack. Some calamity ensues. Shenanigans occur. There it is. <laughs> but basically, I'm just looking in my rearview mirror, seeing calamity happen, and I'm just sort of focused on my lines. 
Now this track is a little bit weird. It's sort of disjointed. And so it doesn't really have a good solid flow like some other road courses do. Hey, you see the uh, second place car there blinking in and out. He's just got a terrible internet connection. But it's basically going to come down to me and this other Red Bull white Miata here. The rest of the competitors really are an issue. Now this race was actually really cool. I have a spotter, technically. Uh, he's actually just observing the race. He's not actually being the proper official spotter because they don't allow that in competitive races and whatnot. But you can watch them, and if you're on a Discord call, you can call them. So what he's doing is he's watching me from above, giving the you know the deltas uh, between me and, and the car behind. Let me know if he makes mistakes. I'm just focused on trying to keep my lines on this track that I basically learned only about a maybe a month prior. Um, I did learn this in an Xfinity car and a Cup car, which those things are just nuts to handle around here. I did okay. I was getting within about two seconds of the top time, two or three seconds of the top times. And in this, I was actually doing reasonably well because a Mazda Miata handles significantly better than a stock car. I mean, it weighs about half as much, it's got better tires, and it doesn't slide around like a nutcase. But then again, stock car racing wouldn't be as entertaining if they gripped as well because, man, those cars are nuts. So we are now in lap two, getting on to the NASCAR one and two corners. Yes, NASCAR counts a single corner as two corners. Yes, then they are long, so it's understandable that they would divide them. Now, the Charlotte Roval has, I want to think, like 14 different corners. And basically, this section here, you're in fourth or fifth gear and braking hard into this bus stop chicane. They actually redesigned the chicane after this one in future iterations. It's just iRacing hasn't updated it yet, where the Entrance and exits are a little bit more friendly. This one is so tight, it's so hard to go too wide and try and make a passing opportunity there. And then you come up into this last chicane, but this one's actually a better one. You can actually take it pretty good, abuse the curbs pretty good, and we are now into lap 3, and you see that white Miata behind me is stuck to me like a cloak. He is not giving up. Cool little gyro cam here. And this part's pretty interesting. You gotta you gotta sort of feather the throttle through there, really manage your speed so you don't go off into the grass here. See I really cut it close, but I'm pushing this car because for me I'm feeling confident. Like I said, the NASCAR Cup car, uh, which I was racing around here before, was really slidey. This one is giving me a lot more grip, making me a lot more confident, and surprisingly, I'm not making many mistakes. I'm making small ones here and there, you know, just kind of subpar lines, maybe subpar braking, getting on the gas too early, stuff like that, where I'm losing maybe a tenth here, tenth there, but I'm not making any catastrophic errors. And like I said in the endurance racing, even in these kind of things, it is about consistency. Consistency is really important. You see, I get kind of a bad run out of the uh, bus stop chicane there. The car behind me is gaining a little bit on me. He and I were pretty close in our uh, yeah in, in our pace here. And you see, I'm gonna actually show the uh, the rivals basically gives kind of a split shows who's going on top. I actually haven't fully understood this graphic yet, but you know, I'm having fun with it. Really just slide it into the first turn. That is the Tums hard burn corner. I love the name of that. That's some brilliant naming. Good on you, Tums. Uh, not sponsored, but I appreciate the naming. Um, yeah, NASCAR sponsors everything. Well, I think actually most racing does, because racing's expensive. I racing is, I mean it is, but it's not as expensive as real racing. Well, P's blinking again. That's just a seat. Or GT7 can't handle a connection even when it's stable. At least I racing can kind of deal with it. You see the cars aren't jittery or anything like that. Take note, Lifney, every other racing game does this. 
Why can't you? That's the reason why I play iRacing more. It's a better game. Better experience. Papa John. <laughs> Probably a joke only my American friends are gonna get. I don't even know if they have Pop Johns in the UK or in the EU. Someone down in the comments let me know. I'm curious. Cause I don't know the reach of Papa John's. Hell, it doesn't even reach into my into my apartment because uh, I prefer my local place. There's a place called Tony's Pizza. That place is really good. Um, there's another place called Gondola's Pizza. It's phenomenal. Just expensive. Coming to the last chicane, you see I'm really abusing the curves, getting two wheels up in the air on both sides. That's pretty awesome. In the cup cars, it was really sending you, but in these things, the suspension's forgiving enough that you can really abuse them. And fortunately, iRacing doesn't model the damage that that would eventually cause. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to keep doing it. Basically, those curves are like speed bumps. So, it, it's a rough ride, and I see the white car, he is looking to my inside. I know that he's there. Boomer's telling me this. Basically, I'm just getting as close as I feel comfortable doing, putting pressure on him to try and pass me safely while giving him enough room. Because iRacing locks you into a cockpit view, it is really difficult to gauge your... Uh, uh, your distance laterally. So you see cars usually will give a lot of room just because they're sketchy. Now, he is going to try and take me on the outside. I'm on the inside. I just kind of let him go by. And it's mainly because this corner, it is a bad corner to try and pass him. So now he has taken the lead. And when you make, when either you make a mistake like that, or you just simply, you know, have to give up the lead, you can't let the pressure of trying to get back into the lead get to you. You still have to be consistent. You still have to take your lines. You can't let that sort of bog you down. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to stay focused there. As you see, I missed the apex a little bit, but I'm still doing okay, keeping within about a second of him. But I'm going to make a few errors here. He actually gets a really good run through this section and on the NASPR uh, portion. And I'm just looking at my deltas and I'm seeing him just pull away. But you know, you just kind of got to keep your head down, focus, don't make mistakes. See, I missed the first apex, kind of miss, actually I, I nailed the second one, but I'm just terrible entry into that one. You should take it a lot more shallow. Take the first corner, really cut into the curbs there. And that way it lines you up pretty good for the second uh, second corner there. And it just allows him to pull away. Any of the gains that I had before, kind of losing it. And as this race progresses, you'll see that the Delta will actually get towards about two seconds, which is miles in terms of racing. Through Heartburn, I'm just... I'm beating myself up for my stupid mistakes, but I'm just trying to focus on reeling him back in. It's lap 7 now, so there's still time. We have a total of 4 laps, because of course, 7, 8, nine, 10, I know. I do know how to do basic arithmetic, even though I went to a California public school and we are ranked 48th in the nation. Thanks, Gavin Newsom. Somehow this stupid state keeps voting you in. I do actually understand basic arithmetic. So, well, that was under the Great Davies days, so take that. Uh, but my car is, I'm feeling pretty good with it. 
trying to reel him in, but you see that distance is just becoming larger and larger. And this is probably where I s start to reel him in. I notice he's making a few mistakes here and there. And Boomer's telling me, yeah, you're, you're gaining here, you're gaining here. Which is, which is cool. He's using the same overlays that I am in, in race labs. And... You know, even though I have the same telemetry that he's seeing, it is making it a little easier that I don't have to focus on that. So you see, through there, I've gained a bit of it now. Bringing that gap down. It's now... I can't really see the numbers there, but now it's down to about a, about a second and a half or so. Get a good run out of there. And you see now now I'm things are getting close. He's starting to feel the pressure because he thought he had lost me and now he's I'm starting to feel the more. Get a good run into the into NASCAR turn one here. And it's just about putting that pressure on. Three laps to go. Actually, really now more two and a half. And I really slided in there. Brake just a little bit too late. Back end was just squealing all over the place. So he ends up gaining just a little bit of time on me. That one wasn't great. Uh, now it's over a second again. No. Just braked a little too late and was a little too aggressive in the turning. I should have braked just a little bit earlier, but I get a good run through here. He does not. He gets a little bit loose. And coming into lap 9, I regain the lead. He just had a bad last chicane there. But things aren't over yet because he is right back on my rear bumper here. He is trying to reel in this Marm Chicken Farm, little Mom's and Yada. Taking the exact same lines through there. I'm really. Uh, Cutting to the inside there, he was just a little bit wide. Get a decent run into the NASCAR, and is it, did he hit the wall there? I heard a bump, but could have also been some of the other cars on the track. The way that the track actually loops in on itself, I mean, there's a section through that portion and turn one and two where the walls are right next to each other, so I don't think he actually hit because he didn't seem to lose time. He's actually gaining on me through the chicane. I actually clip the apex decently and get through there pretty cleanly. Don't hit the wall. Get out of the corner as well. And you know, you look at the deltas. I'm not losing time. But I'm not gaining time either. So I'm losing just a little bit of time. He actually got just a tiny bit better run than I do. He is right on top of me. We come in here for the last lap. Through turn three here. He is right in my bumper, but he's blinking, which is terrifying. Because if you net code into me and I lose the race, man, that would just eat me up. Oh, he cuts it even more close to the wall. They're really right in the curve. Here are the other cars running past me. I'm taking a little bit wider here. He is trying to look to my inside, but he's not going to quite get it. I kind of slam the doors. They're coming to the NASCAR one. He is right on my bumper here. Really get the draft. That's really benefiting him through speed through this section because you're. This is the fastest portion of the track. You get up into fourth or fifth gear, depends on how you do it. I see him go in there. I, I was originally going to try and defend it, but he goes to my inside and just through there and just messes up the chicane. Almost takes 
me out as he's kind of skidding around. Oh. That was close. You see now he's got such a bad run coming out of the bus stop that he's not able to recover it. And as long as I don't mess up here, cut that one, cut that one, and boom, we take the checkered flag, and I get myself a win. That was probably one of the closest races that I've had here. And actually really at all, to be honest, usually there's just one guy that just takes off. So I'm going to enjoy this, take a nice little victory lap around this course. It's a really nice course. They did a good job in the reworking of it. Maybe one of these days it'll get good enough in the uh, one of the NASCAR stock cars and really throw it around here. It'll show you the difference between GT racing and and NASCAR around a around a road course. But I started off this, this uh, at least this week's uh, races, really not enjoying the track too much. And then, you know, I started to find a, a offbeat rhythm with it. And, yeah, it felt really good. So, as we come through the bus stop, <laughs> almost, I lose a little bit of traction there. Uh, you know, I just want to remind you that... Uh, yeah, we got our Discord, I put the link down below, you know, like, subscribe, comment, share, all the YouTube things. And I want to thank you for joining us. Um, you know, we do racing, all sorts of things, we'd love to have you. Um, and if you enjoy the content, please let me know. Tell me what you enjoy about it. Do you enjoy my commercials? Because I enjoy my commercials. I know they're not actual sponsors, and it's mainly just me playing around with things. But we here we go i'm trying to do donuts in this car well it's a little bit low powered and i'm not very good so at least it put down servers there but man those donuts are pitiful i just out of embarrassment in front of the crowd here i'm just gonna go back to the pits if you enjoy awkward donuts there'll be many more of that <laughs> i eventually did figure out how to do donuts in the miata but oh that was bad yeah, I will uh, sign off for now. Hopefully uh, the little bit of footage there that I showed for GT7 completely shitting the bed will help let me figure out how not to do anything because they don't do anything. Um, but alas, I will uh, sign off here and 